Good morning and welcome to another year five and six home learning lesson. We will begin today's lesson with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh my God, you love me. You're with me night and day. I want to love you always, in all I do and say. I will try to please you, Father. Bless me through this day. Amen. Today's learning objective is to answer questions that demonstrate understanding of a text and use this to create sentences that begin with the subordinate clause. During this unit, we will explore the book Can We Save the Tiger? by Martin Jenkins and illustrated by Vicky White. The world's quite a big place, you know. But it's not that big when you consider how much there is to squeeze into it. After all, it's home not just to billions of people, but to the most amazing number of other kinds of living things too. And we're all jostling for space. Us humans have changed the world a lot over the years to make room for, our, for ourselves and to produce the things we need. We've turned forests into farmland, dammed rivers, and built towns and cities to live in. Some of the other animals and plants that we share the earth with have coped with the changes very well, but some haven't. In fact, some have coped so badly that they've not, they're not here anymore. They're extinct. which means we'll never see a live dodo or a stella sea cow or a marsupial fox or a great orc or a broad-faced potteroo. Here is the marsupial fox, the great orc and the broad-faced potteroo. Or I could go on and on. And then there are all those other species that are still around, but only just. They're in danger of becoming extinct, just like the dodo and the stellar sea cow. There are so many endangered species all over the world that it's hard to pick out some special ones. Still, I'm sure you'll all agree that tigers are pretty special. Here is some information about the tiger, or to give it its proper name, the Panthera tigris. This states where it is found, like countries in Bangladesh, Cambodia, China and India. Its size, weighing up to 300 kilograms and measuring up to 3.5 meters long. Its lifespan of up to 20 years. Its habits, its breathing, what it eats, and most importantly, the numbers left in the wild, which is fewer than 2,500. Tigers are big and they're beautiful and they're fierce. And all this makes life very difficult for them these days. Because they're big, they need lots of space. But the countries where they live, like India and Indonesia, have huge num numbers of people in them too, all trying to make a living and all needing to be fed. And because they're beautiful, people have always hunted them for their skin. They also kill them for their bones and meat to use as medicine. And because tigers are fierce, they don't mix well 
with humans. They usually eat deer and antelope and other wild animals, but when there are people nearby, they may end up eating farm animals like cows, sheep and goats instead. Sometimes, though hardly ever, some tigers, usually old or sick ones, end up eating people too. So if you were a poor farmer trying to make a living with a couple of cows and a few goats, you might not be happy if you found there was a hungry tiger living nearby. And if you knew that someone might pay you more for the tiger skin and the bones than you would earn in three whole months working in the fields, then you might find it very tempting to set a trap or two, even if you knew it was against the law. Perhaps it's not surprising that there aren't many tigers left. Let's look at the word extinct. What does it mean? Pause the video now and either look this word up in your home dictionary or use an online dictionary to find the meaning. Put the meaning of this word in your home learning book. Make sure you pause the video to give yourself time to complete this. Did you notice how the font size and type changes? What does this tell us? It identifies information about the different animals. Here are some examples of how the font size and type changes to identify information about the animals. We have the African hunting dog, the broad-faced potaroo, the marsupial fox and an Asian elephant. As you can see, the font size and the font type changes to identify the information about these animals. This can be helpful when trying to identify important information in the text. I want you to consider this question. Why do tigers need a lot of space? Pause the video now and make some notes in your home learning book. So I think the reason that tigers need a lot of space is because they are large, energetic animals. And why do people hunt tigers? Again, pause the video and make some notes in your home learning book. These will all come in handy later on. So I think the reason that people hunt tigers is because their meat can be sold for large amounts of money. Now this is just one of the reasons. Make sure you have more than one reason in your home learning book. Here's another question. Why don't tigers mix well with humans? Pause the video now and answer this in your home learning book. I think that tigers don't mix with humans well because they are fierce and dangerous creatures. Do you notice anything about the answers to each of these questions? That's right, they all start with the subordinate conjunction because, and they are all subordinate clauses. Let's look at how the conjunctions are chosen by the author. Let's look at the words because, so, and but. And here's a quick task. Explain how these have been used and what effect it has. This is the part of the book that we're going to explore again. Remember, you're looking at the conjunctions that the author has chosen. And I'd like you to explain how these have been used 
and what effect they have. Listen to the story again and pause the video to make notes in your home learning book. This is the part of the book that we're going to explore again. Remember, you're looking at the conjunctions that the author has chosen. And I'd like you to explain how these have been used and what effect they have. Listen to the story again and pause the video to make notes in your home learning book. Tigers are big and they're beautiful and they're fierce. And all this makes life very difficult for them these days. Because they're big, they need lots of space. But the countries where they live, like India and Indonesia, have huge num numbers of people in them too, all trying to make a living and all needing to be fed. And because they're beautiful, people have always hunted them for their skin. They also kill them for their bones and meat to use as medicine. And because tigers are fierce, they don't mix well with humans. They usually eat deer and antelope and other wild animals. But when there are people nearby, they may end up eating farm animals like cows, sheep and goats instead. Sometimes, though hardly ever, some tigers, usually old or sick ones, end up eating people too. This is the part of the book that we're going to explore again. Remember, you're looking at the conjunctions that the author has chosen. And I'd like you to explain how these have been used and what effect they have. Listen to the story again and pause the video to make notes in your home learning book. So if you were a poor farmer trying to make a living with a couple of cows and a few goats, you might not be happy if you found there was a hungry tiger living nearby. And if you knew that someone might pay you more for the tiger skin and the bones than you would earn in three whole months working in the fields, then you might find it very tempting to set a trap or two, even if you knew it was against the law. Perhaps it's not surprising that there aren't many tigers left. Let's look at these clauses. Because they are big. Because they are beautiful. Because tigers are fierce. Can these exist by themselves? That's right, they can't. These clauses are subordinate clauses, which means they cannot exist on their own. First, let's look at what a clause is. A clause is a group of words that includes a subject and a verb. There are two types of clauses, independent clauses and subordinate clauses. The independent clause makes sense on its own because it is a complete thought. For example, I went to town. It was red. A subordinate clause supports the independent clause. The opening words of a subordinate clause show that they are dependent on the independent clause. For example, after the storm cleared, because he didn't like chocolate. As you can see, the opening word shows its dependence 
on the independent clause. These are usually subordinate conjunctions. A subordinate clause can come at various points in a sentence. You might use one at the front of a sentence. For example, a fronted adverbial can be a type of subordinate clause. Like a bullet speeding through the air, he ran through the door. As you can see, the fronted adverbial is the subordinate clause. You might want to use one at the end of a sentence. She went straight home after school because she needed an early tea. As you can see, the beginning of the sentence would make sense on its own. But we've added a subordinate clause using the conjunction because to have more detail. Sometimes they are even in the middle of sentences. Here's an example. My brother Richard, who lives in Australia, is coming home for Christmas. If we take this subordinate clause out, the sentence still makes sense. Here it is without the subordinate clause. My brother Richard is coming home for Christmas. As you can see, it still makes sense. But by adding the subordinate clause, we add more detail. Sometimes you will need to use a comma to mark where your subordinate clause is. Here are some general rules to help you know when to use a comma. If the subordinate clause starts the sentence, use a comma after it. If it ends the sentence, you don't need to use a comma. Here's an example. Before we go swimming, we have to go to school. As you can see, after the subordinate clause, we have a comma. Now let's put that subordinate clause on the end, so we don't need a comma. We have to go to school before we go swimming. If the subordinate clause is added additional information to the middle of the sentence, put commas before and after it. If you could put parentheses brackets around your clause, it needs commas. Here's an example. Tomorrow morning, when the clocks strike nine, school will begin. Let's take that out. Tomorrow morning, school will begin. As you can see, the additional information has been taken out. When we put it back in, it's in the middle of the sentence and it begins and ends with a comma. This is also known as a drop clause, as we drop it in the middle of a sentence. Conjunctions are used to start subordinate clauses. Here is a collection of conjunctions. Can you use the conjunctions to make subordinate clauses for this sentence? She walked for an hour. Here are the conjunctions. Which while, when, until, after, before, so that, just then. Here's an example to help. After she had eaten lunch, she walked for an hour. I've used the conjunction after. I've used it at the beginning of the sentence, and so is the subordinate clause. So that means after the subordinate clause, I have added a comma. Try and use these subordinate clauses and subordinate conjunctions in different places in the sentence. Pause the video now and give it a go. So what is a subordinating conjunction? 
A subordinating conjunction is a word which still links two clauses together in a sentence. But the subordinate clause, it adds, does not make sense on its own. Let's look at a few examples. I will be late if I don't get the next bus. I've used the subordinating conjunction if to link the subordinate clause I don't get the next bus. I will be late is the main clause. This clause makes sense on its own. The subordinating conjunction again is if. It starts the subordinate clause. And the subordinate clause is if I don't get the next bus. This doesn't make sense on its own, but does add extra information to the main clause. Let's look at this question again. Why do tigers need a lot of space? We can place the subordinate clause, for example, the answer to the question, at the beginning of the sentence and turn this question into a statement. So here it is. We have the subordinate clause at the beginning and we've now turned the question and answer into a statement. Here it is. Because they are large, energetic animals, tigers need a lot of space. Time for today's main task. Look at the questions on the next slide. Create captions for the book, including information about some of the animals from the book. Extend with some questions that require different sorts of responses. For example, using by as a preposition to an answer. Here are the questions. Why are tigers in danger of becoming extinct? Why is the sloth bear becoming endangered? Why did inhabitants of the island of Pacific Ocean bring the giant African land snail with them? Here are some examples of how we can turn questions into statements. My first question is, how can we save the tiger? I've used this to create a statement. By never buying animal fur, we can ensure that the tiger is saved. Here's a further challenge. Can you create some questions of your own and then answer them in the same way? The book Can We Save the Tiger and other supporting resources can be found on the Year 5 and Year 6 Google Classrooms. Try your best to use the Google Classroom to turn in your best three sentences. If you're unable to do this, then just send it in as a photo to the school email address. Well done Year 5 and 6. That's the end of another home learning lesson. We'll see you tomorrow for the next home learning lesson.